What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the Rock and Verit channel? I have just had my Quadrajet wizard come in. He has looked at the Quadrajets and says, they can be fixed. Because guess what? This little car, this little 355 small block, when we kicked the throttle three times, it revved to 6,500 RPM. It's never done that good. Never in its life has it ever revved that high. I could barely get it to five. So with the right cam, the right valve springs, the right heads, no more leaks. Well, except for the one, the leak right there. From this little bastard. This little ba- Ow, that's hot. That little bastard right there decided to piss. So I have a coolant leak. But, but ladies and gentlemen, it runs. It revs. It destroy. It's getting to destroy a lot of cars that have small blocks are just normal little basic cars this might take on some 383s like small blocks probably not 396 big block but it'll take on some it'll take on some pretty good motors this thing is insane he literally cracked it three times like cracked the throttle bam 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 and the thing shot to 6500 and it had no issues it had no issues. We've built a monster. Yes, the headers look like shit. I haven't checked the plugs yet. And I have a coolant leak. Other than that, I'm fine. This picture's car doing a wheelie down the track. I'm terrified, but I'm so excited. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to... He put his hand over it like this. As it was running and it was sucking more air in. It's not enough fuel. Because it's trying to pull more fuel in as he put his hand over it. It's not big enough jets because it was trying to die then. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the front carb off later. And we're going to wind up do redoing the jets in the front carb to balance out with the rear carb. Because the rear carb has bigger jets in it. So we're going to see if we can balance it out by making the front jets bigger. In the idle circuit alone. He has a weird idle to it still. But this thing is just so amazing right now. In other news, I am going to post the other two videos for the Cars and Coffee event tonight. If they're not already posted by the time this goes out. And I want to tell you all something. Something very important that I learned that not a lot of people putting a cam in a motor know. That I know of. They, they didn't know about this until I asked them. So what you do, after you've broken your cam, you need to get another oil filter. Because eventually, after 50 miles, like say you broke in your cam. You drive it 500 miles is what they say to do on some cams that are flat tap it, like this. They say to drive it 500 miles. The problem is, eventually your filter will clog up. And metal shavings will go through it. And metal shavings will go from the oil pump to your oil filter. Eventually your oil filter will become full metal shavings and it will fail. In which case you will destroy your oil pump. In which case you will destroy everything hooked to the oil system. Which is not good. So what we were doing is I changed oil and filter now until the cam is broke in. When all the metal shavings are in the pan from the cam being broken. Changed all the change all the oil, and put a gigantic truck filter on here. If you can see it. Can you see it? Can you see it? There it is. It's sticking down the same level as the pan. The reason this is, is because a bigger filter has more filter material in it, can take more particles of debris in the engine, so it doesn't, it doesn't have the issue... Of getting full metal shavings. And then there's nothing left but to shove metal shavings through the motor. And I also changed the oil. Because I didn't want any metal shavings that were in the oil. Which was on the drain plug that I found. There was a slight amount of metal shavings in it. Slight. Very slight. I got the metal shavings off the drain plug. Drained all the oil out. It was still somewhat clean. But I didn't want to risk it. Because there was some metal flakes in the pan. So I completely... Drain the pan, drain the oil filter, put a new filter on it that took one and a half quarts. The pan took four and a half quarts. So right now there's six quarts 
swirling around this engine. And this thing didn't miss a beat. And the whole idea is, I learned this from a lot of people. So, I learned this from a couple people, actually. So, the whole idea is you want to keep your oil pump going for as long as possible. If your oil pump fails, and it starts to leak or it starts to fail, and it won't pump properly, you're not getting oil throughout every part of the motor, and it's not lubricating all the motor. Oil pump failure is bad. Very, very freaking bad. So to prevent that, we have changed the oil and we've changed the filter, like I said. And after 50 miles, I'm going to change the oil again, and it should be good to then drive on regular zinc additive oil, like the Lucas hot rod oil that I have, that I used to have in this thing. So I used to put in 1030 Lucas zinc, Lucas high zinc oil, the hot rod oil specifically. And this thing would run great on it, even when it had the wasted cam and everything else. Now, it's going to run amazing. Granted, there's some belt deflection right here in the leak and everything, but I think I think this thing's gonna run pretty damn good. It, it's gonna be a little bit scary, but I'm okay with that honestly because I this car makes me feel alive. I'm going. I'm still going today because of my friends, my family, and this car. The three things that have kept my life going. The joy of this car, working on it with my friends and my family, and. And, work, and being able to enjoy this thing together. I love it. And on that note... Excuse me, I just farted. I farted. It's methane. Anyway, I'm going to let you all go back to your day and do what you got to do. Thanks for watching the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!